Welcome. Welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is such a busy time of the year right now. There's things happening as we start launching towards fall here. And wow, what a, what a busy year it is and what a really um, incredibly important year it is in terms of the election year we're in and different things. And of course, on the forefront of events um, that target our culture, and what we need to pray for is the body of Christ uh, is Somebody Cares Tampa Bay. And they're going to, they're with us today, going to share with you some things that they're involved in to help us pray for our nation and some other things too that you can do here locally. But, and then we will talk to them in just a moment. Then a little bit later in the show, I am so honored for the first time to feature on Bay Focus International Muslim Outreach. Talk about timely and needed here in the Tampa Bay area. We're going to fill you in on how you can participate with them. But we're going to start with Somebody Cares Tampa Bay today. Get your coffee like I have. And uh, we're going to settle in. And we have back with us Daniel Bernard, who is the founder president of Somebody Cares Tampa Bay. Welcome back, Daniel. Thank you for having You're one me One of again. our favorites Appreciate it very here. Much. And you have brought with you your son, Luke Bernard. Hello. So good having you back. Thank you. It's great uh, I want to encourage you to go to the Somebody Cares uh, Tampa Bay website. There may, may be another one. Uh, but Luke has an incredible story of, of healing and God's grace put into a movie called The Favorite. That's right. They can still get that movie, still watch it. It is out there. And is Somebody Cares Tampa Bay site, can they find it there? Or where can they find it? Well, uh, they keep, you can find it on, it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah. So, so just, just go you, there. Yep. you search The Favorite Luke Bernard and yeah, it'll you'll pop find right it. up. Yeah, you'll so. find it. It is worth, it is worth you doing. But Luke is here as CareFest coordinator today yes. for Somebody Cares Tampa Bay. But let me start. We may have some of you watching that don't know what Somebody Cares Tampa Bay is. Daniel, fill us in. Well, uh, Tam Somebody Cares Tampa Bay is a networking of churches and, and ministries and businesses that are uh, coming together across racial denominational lines, working in unity uh, to impact the community uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, demonstrating the gospel uh, through compassionate outreach and work uh, so that we can proclaim the gospel to those people in need. You know, and that translates into, and I encourage you to go to the, to the website, various events throughout the year, regular, ongoing, getting with pastors, the community. You have so many different things you do. Um, but we're here today to talk about um, two things. I'll get to Luke in a moment. He's going to fill us in on CareFest. But Daniel, what? You're doing something called 50-Day Fight. Give us the story on that. Well, you know, I was really prompted because um, I'm born on the 4th of July. Uh, so well, I said, right there. I yeah. got I to do something, you know, for our nation here. And uh, it really just started out very small. I said, you know, that we would begin to, that we would identify the Christian candidates yeah. uh, who are running and uh, get them elected. I uh, think that's important. That's really one of the key things that uh, the first Supreme Justices of our country and uh, those who were in office, that one is, you know, everything was pretty much vetted through the churches, you know, and through the pastors. And so get Christians elected because they're going to hold the values of uh, biblical values that we're looking to. You know, the Bible says when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. And so I uh, started out doing doing that. And then I got other people involved like Lieutenant Colonel Alan West and, uh, you know, Michelle Bachman agreed to come on. And it just began to snowball where we started getting all these uh, various um, well-known people to come on and be our guest. And uh, so it turned into the 50-day fight where we pray a state by state, trying to locate those uh, Christian candidates or those who would, you know, most closely align themselves with biblical values mm -hmm. and begin to pray for them. And of course, all the issues that are yeah. facing yeah. the election as well and all the cultural issues that are facing our nation. You've been doing this for a few years now. Yes. This, is this the second election cycle for uh, four years? This is third. This third. Is third. Okay, third. Mm -hmm. And you do this, you've got events that, that are coming up, but you you also do it right online as well yes. with prayer. It, it's, uh, yeah, so we have pre-launch dates. We'll have people like uh, Bill Federer um, and um, Jason Yates of My Faith Votes and uh, uh, Trevor Loudon, Kevin Jessup, they'll be on the pre-launch, but then we launch officially, and that's done virtually. So every day, once we actually launch, it'll be daily at noon, and then be restreamed at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Wow! And okay. so we'll be we'll be doing that, and uh, and we'll be going again state by state, 
uh, you know, locating those people. But we have a big launch date. And the launch date is actually going to be at the Community Bible Baptist Church there in Pinellas Park, uh, Pastor Brent Stansel. And uh, it'll be at 7 p.m. We'll have Dr. On what date? On September 15th. Okay. September 15th, Sunday night at 7 p.m. And we'll be coming together and uh, we'll be praying. You know, mm-hmm. we we'll start praying. That's the launch. And we'll, we'll pray for Alaska that day. Uh, but And then we'll pray, obviously, with, we'll have other people there who will be praying uh, for local candidates and what have you. Uh, but our friend, Dr. James Garlow, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, he will be there. He'll be our guest speaker mm-hmm. that night. And uh, this is his book that he just came out with, uh, uh, Reversed. His first book was Well-Versed. But this is reverse, and it's about uh, you know uh, Brother Huckabee, um, Mike Huckabee. He's uh, endorsed it, but he's uh, sixty different subjects that he ha- is a resource for people to see what the Bible says about all these different subjects. Yeah. Great resource, and a great resource for pastors too. Yeah. But he's he's going to be there, so he'll be our guest speaker okay, that night. Okay, and then you have a couple other events that I want to get to Carefest. You have a couple other. Yes, we'll have a, we have another event. Uh, the other big live in-person event is going to be November 3rd, mm-hmm. and that'll, wow. be, that'll yeah. be at the crossing. So we're kind of beginning and ending it there with yeah. live in-person events. Again, they will I be all that. live-streamed. And uh, our friend Bishop E.W. Jackson, mm-hmm. you know, he will be speaking, powerful, powerful speaker, be at the crossing November yeah. 3rd, again, in the evening at 6 p.m. Yeah, I, okay, these are the bottom of the bookend events. Yeah, they're kind of the bookend things. With all the prayer that goes on in between. Yep. Um, and then another big event you're doing, and, and I'm going to ask you, Luke, you're overseeing something that we promote every year on Bay Focus Thank called you. Care Fest. Yes. And tell us the date, what's happening, what Care Fest is. Well, Care Fest, <clears throat> it's minor home repairs for, for homeowners who, who will might happen to be uh, disabled, elderly, single mom or dad. It just they they don't you know they don't have the the ability or means for these minor home repairs. And so we work with the government and code enforcers. They give us these different homeowners that are in this need. And because I mean code enforcers, they don't want to apply these fees for these yeah. homeowners because they know like. Hey, they can't do it, and we don't want to charge them mm-hmm. for the, their, their their house is not up to code, and so they they send it to us. And so through the process of CareFest is basically we we interview the homeowner, mm-hmm. um, finding out what this need is, and because it it has to be a uh, volunteer based where it's minor home repair, it can't be professional work, yeah. and so we we get um, our evaluators who are volunteers mm-hmm. to go and check out to see like what is the need. You neatest. send teams though right out to do uh, yeah, pro- these that, that's, projects. Yeah when it, once it goes up for adoption on CareFest is the last Saturday of September. That's September. a CareFest day yeah. uh, but we know that churches and different businesses that day might not fit so we make it year round. I love that. But, the, but, but so, so this analogy like it's a football Okay, and, and the, there's a lot of games, so people can take on different projects throughout the course of the year. But the Super Bowl, the big Saturday, Care Fest Saturday. day, Saturday. is the last Saturday of September. So I, I I want everybody to you know partake in Super Bowl. And this, yeah, we want to do that. <laughs> yeah, right. And you're you're speaking right now. Churches can do this. Churches, businesses, businesses individuals. And, yeah, and so and and, and the thing is, is like yes, yeah, so the homeowner benefits because they are so blessed. You know, we're, we're showing Christ's love by serving, as serving people uh, who just can't do it, do this, this minor home yeah. repair. It could be yard work, could be painting the house, it's just very yeah. minor work. And, and, and a church or organization spending half their day and blessing someone so much. And then yes, and yet it's set, such a, culture in your church in your business yeah. and it's building and it's so so if you're if you're a business person this is a low cost high reward yeah and if you're a church that's just you're just doing you're just being christ you're yeah, showing love I, I, luke and i love i just i just love how you are expressing so much enthusiasm with this because it is you know it's a serve day you know you hear that term like you know serve day but this churches do some of this individually but somebody cares Tampa Bay brings in everybody together, all different. 
And I like the fact that it's 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 open up to so many different groups. All right, best way to people to to get set up for this, right? And because they have to check in and get connected with you is through the website. Tell us about the website. So the web the website is carefestusa.com. Mm -hmm. And so that is where you can see uh, different uh, projects that you can adopt. Okay, so uh, you can pick your project. You can you can pick your project, and so you can you can select the uh, the county, uh, Pinellas County, Hillsborough, and then in the different counties, then you can select the different city. So Pinellas County, Clearwater, Pinellas County, Dunedin. So you can narrow it down to be close to where you might be at, and you know if all that is a little uh, hassle. You can give me a call. Uh, at Somebody Cares Office, yeah. uh, 727-536-2273, and I and you'll will work happily out a plan. help you out and you give a plan. You will customize a plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that. So, I love so that. If, you have, if you have the heart and the will to help, we will make sure you have the ability to okay. get out there right. and do it. Now yeah. We're, we're going to need to end on that note. So the, the two events here we're talking about is 50-Day Fight, which I believe we're going to – um, we're going to hear a little bit about that again in just a moment. And then also carefestusa.com, uh, 50dayfight.com. Uh, and then you can find out more year-round, right, Daniel? Somebody mm -hmm. Cares Tampa Bay could use support year-round. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, there's so many different things. Thank you both. Love having Thank the father-son team. Yes. yes. Luke, great having you back for Thank a few you. years. Let's take a look again, a little bit more information um, from Luke on the 50-day fight, and you want to stay tuned. We have another really interesting interview coming up about how you can minister to Muslims. Stay tuned. Historian Bill Fetter says, preaching the gospel is the most important thing, and the second most important thing is preserving the freedom to do the most important thing. The freedoms we have in America are about to be lost unless we fight. Join us as we pray 50 days leading up to the election. September 15th through November 5th, we'll be praying state by state for candidates we believe will uphold our biblical values once in office. Join guests such as Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, Michelle Bachman, Pastor Rob McCoy, Bishop E.W. Jackson, Lucas Miles, Pastor Gary Hamrick, Dr. James Garlow, Ken Harrison, and many others. Go to the50dayfight.com to join the fight. Welcome, welcome to Bay Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have so many things to tell you about. There's some exciting things coming up. The power of God is so much stronger. The power of Jesus is so much stronger. Well, we're back, and as promised, we're going to introduce a new ministry to us. They've been around for many years, but to us, and it's just very, very incredible that this exists out here in the Tampa Bay area, but they are international in scope, and it is International Muslim Outreach, and it is Muslim Evangelism Training. I love this, and we have the Executive Director, Matt Walter, with us today. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Darlene, Appreciate for having me. Appreciate you coming. Wow. I'm excited. What an incredible ministry this is. You know, we, we know, we, we hear different things around the country and different ministries that are trying to reach the Muslim community. But we have a particular here emphasis here in the Tampa Bay area. Our population has, has grown, and you're going to talk about that and the importance mm -hmm. of this. But before you do, you have a story mm -hmm. uh, yourself, and you come with some real credentials for this. Give us a story. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Darlene. Well, my background includes 15 years in the Middle East, five in the country of Iran when I was a child. My dad was a businessman there. Um, it's a long story, but my family actually got saved in Iran. Uh, so then I went back to the Middle East when I was 18 and took a year off from college and studied Arabic at a missionary language school in Jordan. Went back to the States, majored in Near Eastern languages and literatures, joined the Marine Corps. I was an intelligence officer in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Uh, I then met my wife. Uh, we got married. 
Um, and we decided that the Lord was calling us back to the Middle East. So I went to Jordan in 1993 as a missionary. We returned then in 1999 to 2007. I ran a language school that trained missionaries in the Arabic language. So we returned to the States in 2007. I served in churches in South Carolina and in Ocala. And in Ocala, we noticed the growing Muslim population in the Tampa Bay area. And we knew the Lord was calling us here to help churches and Christians reach out to Muslims with the gospel. Yeah. So we came here and established the Tampa Muslim Outreach in 2013. Ten years later, the ministry was all over the world. We changed the name to International Muslim Outreach, and here we are today. Oh, my goodness. All right. I, I, to start with, amazing how well you did that and how quickly that it's a lifetime and you're still young, you know, that to what God has for you. Um, and you like me saying, you know, we're, you still are young. So, I mean, you have got a lot of years left of this, um, what God is um, having you do. But I, I, you, you touched on something here a little bit um, that you got connected with churches and something that when you came back over here, uh, Muslim evangelism training, why is this important? This is so important right now because we live in a strategic time. Uh, the Great Commission says, go make disciples of all the nations. And that word nations in Greek in the original of the New Testament is ethne, from which we get the word ethnic. That means that Christ wants members of every ethnic group represented around his throne in eternity. And he is inviting the church to join him in gathering them by his power. And, and we have to deal then with Islam because Islam constitutes a majority of a quarter of the world's ethnic groups. And here's the other piece. They're not just overseas. They are coming to our country through emigration. So now, for example, the Tampa Bay area has 33 Muslim institutions, the largest K through 12 uh, Muslim school in North America. And they are, have plans to build one of the largest mosques in North America here in the Tampa Bay area. So God is bringing them here where we can reach them in relative freedom. They're in our neighborhoods, our hospitals. Uh, and uh, this is something God is doing and we need to seize the moment. You know, and one of the things that um, I think what you, what you do is so important, why it's so important. You're trying to break down some maybe some um, preconceived ideas, some um, for, for lack of a better word, a little bit of um, concern, you know, maybe some resentment and mm -hmm. forging relationships because based on, you know, the, the whole what's happened in terrorism worldwide. How do you bridge some of those gaps? I mean, you've you've no doubt know some very wonderful people with Muslim backgrounds. Certainly, you, you've put your finger on it. There are obstacles in the Christian heart to reaching Muslims. And I think one of the primary obstacles is fear. And I understand that. When we were in the Middle East, there were times I was afraid. There's one turning point in my life when I was in a taxi with a man who told me he had just returned from Afghanistan where he had been training to kill the enemies of Islam. And we began a conversation. The Lord gave me Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I shared that with him. And it was so transformative to him that he insisted on talking. And by the end of the conversation, he had received Christ as his savior. And at that, that was kind of a turning point for me, helping me realize there is no one so lost that the power of the gospel cannot reach them. Yeah. And that God is able to use us despite our fears. The Bible says we do not have a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. Yeah. And that spirit is the one God is calling us into. Well, one of the things that, that you do, you're not holding major events, right? You're right. not holding, doing community-wide events, trying to reach the Muslim community. You're trying to teach one-on-one. -on -one, so, right. And you're available to go into churches, available to do different things to do this. But how do you reach the Muslims? What are some of the, the techniques? Right, thank you. Well, we do trainings in churches. And our goal is to equip Christians, individual Christians who, who, into whose lives God has brought Muslims to share their faith with those Muslims in a way that's effective. And I think what Christians need to know is that Islam is basically a works-based religion. They believe that on the day of judgment, there'll be a scale. And on one side, they'll weigh your good deeds. And on the other side, they'll weigh your bad deeds. And whichever weighs more determines your eternal destiny. Darlene, I know you're a wonderful person, but imagine if that were true, how we would feel. <laughs> it would keep us up at night, and it does yeah. keep Muslims up at night. Christians have a treasure 
that we can share with our Muslim contacts. And that is God loves us so much that he wants to give us assurance of where we are going after we die. He wants us in a love relationship with him as father and child, something that Muslims know nothing about. Well, in a gospel of grace. A gospel of grace. Romans 3, 23 through 25. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. What good news that is. Well, it's transformative for uh, if you're looking at if you're you're talking to that Muslim um, friend or, or person you're connected with, um, and they are feeling the weight yeah. of not being able to potentially live up to what's expected of them, and you come along and say this. All right, so you so all right, so you you are um, saying you have to have the conversations. You do, and what what you you do is you have that conversation. You focus on the assurance that you have, but then they're going to have challenging questions to ask you. Yeah. Muslims are trained to respond to the gospel. And in some ways, they're more ready for us than we are for them. They're going to ask hard questions about the Trinity, about the uh, incarnation, about the virgin birth, about whether or not our scriptures are, are reliable. And Christians don't feel ready for that. So we like to equip Christians with good, powerful answers that commend the gospel. And you can find those on our website. I, yeah, I think that's... That's huge. You know, you're training, you know, not only to talk to Muslims, but you're training Christians in apologetics. Right. I mean, then we should all be able to give an answer. That's true. In season and, and, you know, for what, and, you know, we could all use some some training on that. Mm -hmm. All right. So what has been the result? What are you seeing? You have some numbers, people whose lives have been changed. Well, for one thing I'm excited about is that we have a network of Christians who are now praying for and seeking to share Christ with their Muslim neighbors. And that network started out small, but it's grown and it's become international. So we have over 400 now. And I would really encourage anyone who's seeing this broadcast, if the Lord has put a Muslim into your life and you realize, oh, God is calling me to be a witness to that person, but I don't know how, please go to our website, please sign up to be what we call an ambassador. An ambassador is a Christian who is praying for and seeking to share Christ with a Muslim. We'll reach out to each ambassador once a month with a text asking for prayer requests. That's basically it. And over the months, you'll see as our special team of over 200 people prays for you, that God opens doors and that he empowers you. And we have resources for you and coaching for you as you need it. So Please pray that. about that and do that. So we're, we're excited about that number, over 400 ambassadors now, all over the world now as well. We see that this is a need in Africa, it's a need in South Asia, so we're excited that God is calling us to encourage them as well, but, but here in the Tampa Bay area in a big way as well. Um, the other thing we're excited about is we're seeing God reach Muslims. We're seeing him change their lives. Just a couple of weeks ago, I heard about an Iraqi woman who had gotten to the end of her Uh, her resources. She was desperate. She parked in a parking lot alone, cried out to God and said, if Jesus is really who the Christians say he is, not just a prophet as the Muslims say he is, if he is really the son of God, Lord, show me a sign. Someone rapped on her window right at that moment. She rolls down her window and uh, it's a man. And he says, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I feel like God wants me to tell you how Jesus changed my life. And so she knew, (laughs) isn't that a great story? She knew it was the sign she had been looking for. The Lord then directed her steps to one of our ambassadors. And our ambassador had the privilege of reaching her for Christ. That's the kind of thing that God is doing. So you're, you are seeing tangible, tangible results on this. And, and, and it, you've, are you are you able to, and we're going to tell our viewers now how they can connect with you. Are you able to get any kind of a sense of, of hundreds, thousands, or how, how, how can, because this is, this is a really important thing. It might not be where you can get those kind of numbers because people, ha- you have to be careful. You do. And people aren't going to share the information yeah, with you. Yeah, right. Sometimes I've had Muslims who I realized they're a believer, but they won't even tell me about it. So that's interesting. <laughs> so yeah. hard numbers yeah. are very difficult to come by. Yeah. But I will tell you, we've seen more fruit in this in the last few years than we've ever seen in the decades that I've worked with Muslims. It seems like this is the time that God has chosen to turn his loving attention to the Muslim world. And that's very exciting. I I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. How can 
our viewers then connect with you? What is it you've mentioned it periodically through this? Um, tell, tell us again, and we're gonna we'll have some of this information on the screen in just a moment too. But um, and what what's available for them when they go to the website? But give them the website again, and what's actually on there that they can sure. Tap. Well, on our website, we have a Get Involved page. That's where okay. people should go. And one option is if you have a Muslim contact, sign up to be an ambassador. That sounds really weighty, but it's yeah. not. All it means is that we'll reach out to you once a month, offer you prayer and resources, and coach you as you need it. Um, another option is if you are a pastor, we are happy to come and do a training at your church. Uh, there's no charge for the training. Yeah. We just want to equip your people so that they can make disciples of Muslims, you know. And uh, another option is to join our special prayer team. We need people who are excellent at prayer, diligent in prayer, to be willing to take real-time prayer requests from our ambassadors and pray for those okay. on the spot. And so they can sign up to do that. And then, of course, we need financial support Finan as well. Yeah, Everything we do, we depend yeah. on the generosity of God's people. Give so that more Muslims can hear the gospel from their Christian okay, friends. Okay, we'll end on that note. Wow, Matt, thank you so much. Thank and, you. Oh, this has just been so an honor to have you here. Uh, such an accomplished um, person that God has risen up to take this ministry around the world. And you're going to see on the screen now again how you can contact International Muslim Outreach. And we will be right back with more of Faith Focus. Stay tuned. Well, I hope you will partner with International Muslim Outreach and all they are doing uh, in evangelism. Just amazing to see God open doors there and what God is doing. God loves everyone, all religions, all people groups. Um, also, uh, Somebody Cares Tampa Bay, the 50-day fight, Care Fest, everything that they're involved in. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I want to hear from you. Our contact information is on the screen. And we will see you next week. May God richly, richly bless you.